Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we are going to be taking a look at the blood vessels and nerves of the abdomen or trunk as well as the lower extremity. Now to get started, let's define the abdomen a little bit. So the abdomen is going to start directly after a certain muscle. And if you look closely, this muscle right here, this thin sheet of muscle, which is typically under the lungs as well as above the liver, that thin muscle is called the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is the border between the thorax, which is up here, and then the abdomen, which is down here. So now that we're in the abdomen, you can see that you have a variety of different like organs, and a lot of these organs might sound familiar, so let's just get oriented really quickly. So first of all, the stomach is this big organ. This is kind of relatively central, but a little bit to the left. But upper left abdomen, you find stomach, upper really left, that's spleen, and then upper right, this really big organ, this is the liver. And then before we get started, let's also point out a couple more. If you look closely, you have these bean-shaped structures, those kidney beans, those are the kidneys. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some blood vessels. But before we look at these kind of specifically, um, let's look at a more simple model. So down here, you can see that you have the abdominal aorta here, and it's going to be formed, or rather it's going to start right after the diaphragm, which you can see right here. And that's where you'll see a few different blood vessels coming off of it. So to get started, you wanna look at these in order if ever possible, where you can start off with celiac trunk. That's the very first thing that you, come, or that you see coming off the abdominal aorta. Then superior mesenteric artery, that is a unpaired blood vessel that's coming off the abdominal aorta as well. And if you have superior, you also have inferior mesenteric artery. Now, there's a couple of blood or paired blood vessels that you'll see here too, which once again, if you look closely, you have these big kidney beans. These kidney beans are the kidneys, and that means that these will be your left and right renal arteries. So renal means kidney. And whenever you hear the word renal, you should be thinking kidney. And then furthermore, if you look further down, there's another pair of blood vessels, which are a lot smaller. But these blood vessels, if you follow them, will lead to the pelvic region. And that's because these are going to be going to your gonads, your testes or ovaries, respectively. So since we don't know the sex of this model, we can call this gonadal, which is an asexual term. But if you know if this was male or female, you can call it testicular or ovarian, respectively. So both of these come off of the abdominal aorta, along with the renal arteries, which are between superior and inferior mesenteric arteries. So moving to another model, this gets a little messy, but let's try this one more time. You can see up here, the very first thing that comes off of abdominal aorta, I know that the lighting is not the best, but this is celiac trunk. Now, celiac trunk was the first one, but trunk means that there's branches coming off of it. And you'll be able to see three in particular, one that comes up and to the left. This little one right here is called the left gastric artery. This big one going to the left to the spleen is called splenic artery. And then this one going to the right, going to the liver, the word for liver is hepatic. So that means that this is called common hepatic artery. Now, if we follow this down, you'll see that you have superior mesenteric artery, which is the next one. And then you have the left and right renal arteries. And then if you look closely, and these will be a little hard to see, but you have these little tiny ones. Those tiny ones are gonna be called your left and right gonadal arteries, which in this case is fine because you, know, you don't have a too many or other organs here. But lastly, coming off and going to the left, this right here is going to be called the inferior mesenteric artery. So superior mesenteric artery was this one up here. Inferior mesenteric artery actually comes off and goes to the left side of the abdomen to your intestines. So those are the abdominal, abdominal arteries, but abdominal aorta is going to eventually terminate as it branches. So if you look closely, it's going to branch right here and right here. And those two big branches, now we're in the pelvic region, and that's where we're going to find the iliac arteries. But specifically, we have three different iliac arteries. These would be common iliac arteries. 
Now common iliac artery is going to continue down and as it branches, there'll be two more that come off of it, internal and external iliac artery. Now, as we go down, there's actually going to be a white band, which I'll show you in a second, but that's going to be right around here where it goes from the ilium to the femoral region. And that's going to be where you find, well, the femoral artery, but that white band, which will go across from anterior superior iliac spine to the pubis, that's called the inguinal ligament. So across the inguinal ligament, external iliac artery will then turn into femoral artery. Now you'll be able to follow femoral artery continuing down. And as you do that, eventually it is going to change names. So before we get to that, let me show you this on the other model, which shows you the white band. So although not on the like actual side, you can see this white band right here. This is the inguinal ligament. And as the artery passes by it, it will turn from external iliac artery to femoral artery. Now femoral artery is gonna be found in something called the femoral triangle, but we'll talk about that in class. But basically you have a triangle with femoral artery, vein and nerve within it. So femoral artery is right here. And then as you can see, femoral vein will actually be right next to it. But as femoral artery and vein travel down the lower extremity, it's actually gonna have another name change. So there's a certain landmark right around here or so called the adductor hiatus formed by the adductor magnus. And as it passes through, the femoral artery and vein go to the back of the knee. And as it goes to the back of the knee, which is kind of indicated here, that's where you're going to find popliteal artery and vein. Now for the arteries, we're going to continue a little bit more. And that's where you're going to see that you have two branches of the popliteal artery. You have an anterior branch and a posterior branch. And these are going to be along the medial side of the leg. So these are called the anterior and posterior tibial arteries. Now, to call, now following down the posterior tibial artery, you can see that going over here. Remember, tibial is medial. So posterior tibial artery is going to be going down all the way along the side of the ankle, right behind the medial malleolus. So this is going to be found within a group of structures, which we like to call the Tom, Dick, and Nervous Harry structures, but you can find posterior tibial artery, posterior to the tibia on the medial side, but then anterior tibial artery you'll be able to find coming from popliteal artery and going down the front of the tibia. So this is a relatively deep artery that's running underneath tibialis anterior and flexor digitorum longus, but this, or sorry, extensor digitorum longus, but this is the anterior tibial artery, which as it travels down onto the foot, that's where you're going to see that it kind of forms this curve. And at the very least for our class, we can consider this the dorsalis pedis artery. So dorsalis pedis artery, there's a little bit more to it, but uh, technically, I mean, but there is posterior tibial artery, or sorry, there is the dorsalis pedis artery that'll be right on the back or rather the top of the foot. Now, just to be clear, you do also have one more artery over here, which is not going to be a part of our class, but this is called the fibular artery. But remember, fibular is lateral. Now, with that said, I mean, that's most of the arteries going from the abdomen and then all the way down to the lower extremity. But let's take a look at the veins. And luckily, a lot of these veins will be somewhat similar. So let's take a look at those. So for our class, at least, we will start at the popliteal vein over here, and the popliteal vein is in the back of the knee, but then as it goes up, it's going to go into the femoral vein. But one more vein we want to learn about is this really long, really medial, very superficial vein, and it's so long, we call it the great saphenous vein. So great saphenous vein is gonna be traveling up along the medial side of the leg, medial side of the knee, medial side of the thigh, and then finally up to the femoral vein. Now in a similar manner, luckily, as you pass the inguinal ligament in, a, in the same way as the artery, femoral vein then turns into external iliac vein. And then if you look closely, you have an internal iliac vein as well. And when they join together, that's where you'll have the common iliac vein. 
So common iliac vein, and there is a left and a right common iliac vein. When those join together, that's where you get this really big vein that's going to go all the way up to the right atrium. This is the inferior vena cava. Now, this is where we get a little bit of difference between the arteries and the veins. But real quick, something I need to add. So the veins, a little different. So actually, let's go back to this model down here where you can see a couple of things. So first of all, if you look closely, you can see that you have your gonadal arteries and you actually have your gonadal veins right with them. But the gonadal veins are a little different from the arteries. The right gonadal vein is gonna go straight into inferior vena cava, but the left gonadal vein goes up into this vein coming from the kidney, the left renal vein. So that's a little bit of asymmetry between them. So it's something important to note, but you can see them pretty clearly and they're going into different things, which is just how our bodies are. But if you look closely, you have your kidneys and that means that you have your left and right renal veins. Now there's actually a video that goes over this a lot better, but I can show you very briefly what we call the chair or rather the hepatic portal system. But if we can, let's use the arteries as some good indicators as well. So if you look closely, this right here, what artery was this? This is the inferior mesenteric artery. And right next to it is inferior mesenteric vein. And then once again, superior mesenteric artery. That means that you have superior mesenteric vein. And this, once again, on this model gets a little bit jumbled up. So sorry to keep switching, but let's take a look at this one now. So once again, inferior and then superior mesenteric arteries inferior and superior mesenteric veins now if you follow that inferior mesenteric vein up do you see what is connected to it's connected to a vein which is hidden behind the splenic artery which is splenic vein so inferior mesenteric vein goes into splenic vein and then if you follow splenic vein all the way across you'll see that it connects with the superior mesenteric vein. And then as superior mesenteric vein and splenic vein join together, that's where we'll get this vein that goes up into the liver and brings all of the digestive blood into the liver, which is gonna be a hepatic portal vein. Now, I'll go over one more thing, which is, going to be the, which is going to be the nerves, which honestly is pretty simple. So luckily we can do this pretty quickly. So let's take a look at what we've got here with the nerves. Now for the lower extremity, there's two major plexi that's gonna be involved here. The lumbar plexus coming from the lower back and then the sacral plexus coming from the sacrum. So the lumbar plexus will have two nerves that are gonna be involved with this. So if you look closely, going to the front of the thigh and under the inguinal ligament in this area called the femoral triangle, which is also where you find femoral artery and vein, this is gonna be called femoral nerve. So femoral nerve goes down and there's a bunch of branches which we're not gonna learn for our class, but that's gonna go to your quadriceps and even a little bit further down the leg as well. But there's one more nerve that you'll see coming off of the lumbar plexus, which you can see going down and down and then through this hole. Do you remember what this hole is called in the coxal bone? That's called the obturator foramen and this is called the obturator nerve and the obturator nerve, if you look closely, is on the medial side. So that's gonna be innervating all of those muscles on the medial side. And think to yourself, what action do those do? This is largely going to your adductors. So two Ds, two D as in dog. Now, lastly, looking at the sacral plexus, there's this really big nerve, that gigantic nerve going back here behind, oh, I don't know if you can see it, but behind the greater sciatic notch this is called sciatic nerve. And looking at the sciatic nerve, there will be two major branches, which branch near the knee going into the leg and name for the bones again. You have one on the medial side, one on the lateral side. So this is where you'll have the tibial nerve. That's gonna be going once again along the medial malleolus, just like the posterior tibial artery. So tibial nerve. And then on the lateral side, this one is called common fibular nerve. And common fibular nerve actually does have more branches, but we'll, you can learn that another time, but those are going to be your superficial and deep 
fibular nerves. But common fibular nerve is the lateral one coming off the sciatic nerve. So with that said, that should be just about it for today. So hopefully that helps, um, and thank you for listening. So great job so far. Good luck with your studying, and I'll see you all next time.